Good afternoon. My name is Francelli KG, and I'm a nutritionist with the Child Nutrition Programs at the USDA's Food and Nutrition Service. And with me in the room are Anna Aerosmith, Grants Officer, and Mimi Wu, another nutritionist. We have a few reminders before we get started for today's webinar on the fiscal year 2018 Child and Adult Care Food Program Meal Service Training Grant. You are currently in listen-only mode. You should be able to hear us through your computer speakers. We will take questions at the end of this webinar using the chat box on the bottom left of your screen. Questions will be answered during the last 10 minutes of the webinar. As the webinar progresses and you have questions about a specific component, please type it into the chat box so we can answer them at the end of the webinar. Thank you for joining us for the informational webinar on the fiscal year 2018 CACSP Meal Service Training Grant. This webinar will focus on the grant application, scope of training, period of performance, and post-award reporting requirements for these non-competitive grants. On Friday, April 20th, 2018, the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food and Nutrition Service announced non-competitive funding for state agencies administering the Child and Adult Care Food Program. Under this provision, each state agency has the opportunity to receive a funding allocation of $100,000 for CACSP meal service training. Applications must be submitted through grants.gov by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on May 30th, 2018. Grant funds will be awarded this fiscal year no later than September 30th, 2018 with a two-year period of performance. Who can apply for this grant? SNS will award these grants to state agencies that administer CACSP. In most states, the state agency administering child nutrition programs is the State Department of Education or Department of Public Instruction. And in some cases, the State Department of Health administers the CACSP. A child care center or a family daycare home participating in CACSP is not a state agency. Those entities would need to contact their state agency to express an interest in partnering on this grant. Each state can only submit one application. The purpose of these non-competitive funds is to provide training and technical assistance to CACSP operators. Appropriate topics of training under this grant include meal planning, use of the food buying guide for child nutrition programs and the recipe analysis workbook, special dietary accommodations, offer versus serve meal service, and family style meal service. Culinary training, such as preparing whole grain rich foods and healthy food preparation methods could also be included, as well as the selection and purchase of creditable foods. Training topics that are not included under the scope of this grant include nutrition education for program participants and gardening activities. There are other avenues and funding opportunities for these topics, such as farm to preschool, and Team Nutrition Training Grants. The CACSP Meal Service Training Grants are specifically for training around meal service. Now we will discuss various training methods. State agencies may use these CACSP Meal Service Training Funds to provide training themselves, contracts with others for training, and or facilitate Institute of Child Nutrition training. States can provide subgrants to sponsoring organizations and independent centers to provide training and also support interactive in-person training with hands-on learning activities as part of the training approach. Here are additional strategies that can be utilized and planning and implementing CACSP meal service training. Designating a CACSP training coordinator to facilitate communication and logistics for training, maintain records of trainings provided, share training tools with operators and partners, 
advise on effective training strategies, monitor training needs and trends throughout the state, and provide technical assistance and follow-up support. The state could also conduct a needs assessment to identify areas where additional training is needed. Another strategy is to follow up with training participants at regular intervals to provide technical assistance and assess implementation of new skills learned. The state may also choose to develop strategies to provide training to CACFT operators in rural locations or hard to reach areas. And having CACFP operators develop personalized goals, objectives, and action plans as part of the training can also be an effective approach. Now I will turn it over to my colleague, Mimi, to discuss training resources. Okay. Hi, everyone. As Fran Seal said, my name is Mimi Wu. I'm a nutritionist with FNS Child Nutrition Program. And right now I'll take you all through some potential training resources from USDA's Teen Nutrition Initiative and the Institute of Child Nutrition that you can use to train CACFP operators and providers on the meal pattern. As you all know, the intent of the CACFP meal service training grant is to support the delivery of training to CACFP operators rather than the development of training materials. States are encouraged to use existing training materials, such as the ones we're about to go over, in the delivery of their training. Of course, States are also welcome to use other materials instead of, or in addition to, what's included in this overview. And USDA encourages the use of evidence-based training strategies and materials that are of adequate strength and duration to ensure that the training is effective and that CACFP operators gain and hone their knowledge, skills, and abilities in the provision of healthy meals that align with the CACFP meal pattern. Many of you may already be familiar with Teen Nutrition CACFP Meal Pattern Training Worksheets. These simple two-page worksheets include scenario-based questions or activities to test and reinforce knowledge of key concepts in the CACFP Meal Pattern. As you can see on the screen, we currently have nine uh, worksheets available online and in print in both English and in Spanish. Titles and topics include Serving Milk in the CACFP, grain-based desserts in the CACFP, serving meat meat alternates at breakfast, methods for healthy cooking, offer versus serve in the CACFP, and more. Two other worksheets focused on whole grain rich foods in the CACFP are currently being developed and should be released soon. Team Nutrition also offers a serve tasty and healthy foods in the CACFP posters that show the meal pattern for each age group in the child and adult meal pattern, and show sample meals for breakfast, lunch, supper, and snack using photographs that were taken specifically for CACFP settings. These can also be a valuable resource when training program operators and providers on the CACFP meal pattern. These posters are available in both English and in Spanish. To complement these training materials, last fall, Team Nutrition kicked off a webinar series titled CACFP Halftime 30 on Thursday. These 30-minute webinars are held once a month and highlight the CACFP meal pattern training tools by providing an in-depth look at each resource and showing viewers how to apply the concepts described to, the CA to meet the CACFP meal pattern. These webinars also include interactive features to allow participants to check their knowledge, demonstrate their skills, and ask questions. These webinars are held on the third Thursday of every month in both English and in Spanish. The English webinar are held from 2 to 2.30 Eastern Time, and the Spanish webinars are held from 3 to 3.30 Eastern Time. Webinars are recorded and can be accessed on the Team Nutrition website a few weeks after the live webinar airs. Upcoming webinars are listed on the slide, and you can also see the list of recorded webinars. Again, all webinars are available in English and Spanish. Attendees that, in, uh, that attend the entire webinar can receive a certificate of participation. Additionally, the National CACFP Sponsors Association provides participants the opportunity to submit and track continuing education credits on their website for viewing either the live webinar or the recorded webinar. 
Registered dietitians can also earn continu continuing professional education credit units from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics for viewing either the live webinar or the recorded webinar. So these webinars might be another resource you can incorporate in your training. The Food Buying Guide is another tool for training that might be of use to CACFP operators in your state. As many of you know, the Food Buying Guide contains food yield information for all USDA child nutrition programs and can be used by program operators to get information about how much food they need to purchase for meals. This tool is now available as an interactive web-based tool, a mobile app for both Apple and Android devices, and a downloadable PDF. The interactive web-based version of the Food Buying Guide includes a recipe analysis workbook which lets program operators and providers enter the ingredients in a recipe to see what components the recipe can count towards and how much of that component is in one serving and generate a contribution statement. And here you can just see a sample contribution statement generated by the recipe analysis workbook. And as I mentioned, the food buying guide is now available as an app for iOS or Android devices, making this information even more accessible to program operators. Other materials under development from Team Nutrition that can be used for training include feeding infants in the CACFP, which is meant to help CACFP operators implement the infant meal pattern, and the accompanying parent engagement piece, Breastfed Babies Welcome Here, which can be used to foster and strengthen relationships between providers and parents as related to infant feeding. And as we mentioned previously, Team Nutrition is currently developing resources related to serving whole grain rich foods in the CACFP, and this should be released before the end of fiscal year 2018. In addition to USDA's teen nutrition resources, FNS also worked with the Institute of Child Nutrition to develop an eight hour in-person CACFP meal pattern requirements training, which can be used to train providers, sponsored organizations, and others on the CACFP meal pattern requirements. This eight-hour in-person training consists of three main sections. There's a section on the infant meal pattern, another section on the child and adult meal patterns, and then one more section on the optional CACFP best practices. ICN recently developed an online version of this training as well, which is being released in sections. The first two sections that have been released address the infant meal pattern and the optional CACFP best practices. The online version of the child and adult meal pattern sections will be released soon. These CACFP meal pattern requirements online courses do not have to all be completed in one sitting. Instead, each course can be completed in chunks and will allow you to stop and resume where you left off to complete at a later time. ICN also offers in-person trainings that may help staff with serving meals in the CACFP such as food safety or creating supportive environment at mealtime. ICN also offers many other resources in print and online that can be used to train CACFP meal pattern providers, including meal pattern posters, materials regarding food safety, food allergies, culinary videos, and more. As a reminder, all these materials are free and more information can be found at www.theicn.org. And now I will turn this presentation back over to Francile, who will wrap up with some more information about the grant. And as Francile mentioned, we'll take questions at the end of this webinar. So if you have any questions on any of these materials or anything else, please feel free to enter them into the chat box now or at any time so we can try to answer them in just a few minutes. Thank you, Mimi. Now I'd like to go over a few budgetary items to consider in preparing your application and planning for CACFP meal pattern training. Please keep in mind that all requested costs must be allowable, allocable, necessary, and reasonable in accordance with 2 CFR Part 200 and 400 of the Uniform Administrative Requirements Cost Principles and audit requirements for federal awards. There are line items that are allowable up to 10% of the total budget. They include evaluation of training activities, purchasing electronic devices and software to support the implementation of training, such as tablets, 
laptops, display boards, et cetera, and adaptation of materials to meet the needs of a specific audience, such as translating materials into additional languages. Food as a material cost of a specific training activity is allowable up to 5% of the total budget. This chart notes the dates, annual, and final reports are due to SNS throughout the grant. Each annual progress report will be due 30 days after the annual grant period, which would be October 2019 and October 2020. The final report is due 90 days after the close of the grant period of performance, which is December 2020. Financial reports are also due at the same intervals. These are the important dates to remember for the CACSP Meal Pattern Training Grant application. May 30th, 1159 p.m. Eastern Time is when grant applications with required materials are due for submission into grants.gov. SNS will not accept fax or email grant applications. The anticipated award date is sometime in September of this fiscal year, 2018. If you have specific application questions after the webinar, please direct them to our grants officer, Anna Aerosmith, at the email address on the screen. And now we are going to open it up for questions from the audience. So please type your questions into the chat box and uh, we will go ahead and get started um, answering them. Okay, great. Thank you, Francille. That was a great um, explanation of the grant. And so we'll go ahead and dive into some questions. I see some coming in. You guys are asking great questions, so thank you. For that, and the first question I have is, um, if we're already doing trainings with CACFC operators, can this meal service training grant be used to continue that training? So I'll take that one. This is Anna. You can use these training grants as a continuation or an expansion of an existing project or activity as long as um, the funds for the existing activity are not specifically earmarked for that. Um, in other words, you can't double dip. You cannot use funds from these CACFP grants um, and funds from another source, whether it's another grant or your state funds or something like that for the same activities. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. And then um, another question we got are how many pages is the project narrative, and how many pages are the budget narrative? Uh, within the uh, memo that was released that gave all of the guidelines and detail for this application, um, the request is about a page for both the budget narrative and the project narrative combined. So one page total. Okay. Wonderful. And, there are, and I'm assuming there's more specifics within the memo as well, right? Yes. The memo does um, include more details on what needs to be uh, included within the budget. Um, it's likely that you wouldn't have, you know, a lot of room for the budget narrative. And so it does note what, what does need to be included in that section uh, on page five of the memo. Okay. So page five, everybody. Thank you. Um, another question that we have are, can you hire a grant manager with these funds? Yes, a grant manager can be hired um, with these meal service training grant funds to support uh, the implementation or planning uh, of these grants. Great. And another similar question, can you use the grant to cover the cost of a facility for the training? Yes, cost of facilities for training implementation um, such as rental, uh, maybe of a, a kitchen or another classroom type of space is an allowable cost. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, does this grant require that an outside evaluator be procured 
or can staff, I guess internal staff, conduct the evaluation? Um, this grant does not require the hiring of an outside evaluator, uh, so internal staff can conduct the evaluation of the training activities and the impact of those within the state. Great, great, thank you. Is it an allowable activity to tr transform an in-person training into online training offerings? That is an allowable cost um, to, to pay for the conversion, let's say, mm -hmm. of, of trainings um, into online content to uh, increase the reach of the training offerings. Um, I guess I would just encourage folks to consider that the cost of that and is that, um, you know, the best use of funds to, to, to allocate to that purpose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's fair. Okay, Francis, I'll give you a break um, because there's a question I really want to answer. So the question is, will you also be creating a worksheet for determining ounce equivalents for grains? And the answer is yes. Um, we will definitely develop that and release it prior to the October 1st, 2019 uh, uh, date where, and that's where in CACSP grains will be counted in ounce equivalents instead of serving. Um, so another question is, can you purchase teen nutrition resources with grant funds? Um, and I think I'll take a stab at answering that. So as you all may know, teen nutrition resources are for free for anyone participating in a USDA child nutrition program. So state agencies can definitely order them in bulk. Sponsoring agencies can as well. Um, so I guess I'm not sure, um, you know, I'm not sure about the need to actually purchase them because Team Nutrition does make them available for free for those participating in our program. And I guess um, just to follow up on that, if you did for some reason need to pay for copies maybe, mm -hmm. um, maybe you wanted to make just black and white copies, I mean, that would be an allowable cost. Okay. But as Amy said, um, they are available to operators okay. in bulk order. Okay. That's a, good, that's a good point. Photocopying and other office services, if they wanted to blow something up, oh, that, yeah. that would be an allowable. Great. Okay, um, another question. Are electronic curriculums or captioning costs for videos eligible costs? I would believe so. Um, with captioning, definitely making it more accessible to, to audiences that might need uh, the captioning at the bottom of the video, um, that would be an allowable cost. Um, what was the other part of the question? Um, electronic curriculum. Or captioning. Okay. okay. I guess I guess if someone wants to purchase and like an online training oh, or something. Yes, I I think that cost would fall within training materials, um, and would be allowable okay. with these funds. Okay, and along those same lines, are costs for contracting videography eligible? Yes, that is an allowable cost. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. I love your answers, Francille. <laughs> they all they all seem to be yes. Okay, is there a minimum or maximum amount each? state has for disbursement if they choose to partner with other agencies? There is n not a, a minimum or a maximum. We would leave that to the discretion of the state agency Great. and how they choose to set up um, the distribution of funds. Yeah, I'm going to tag on to that. Um, the funds will be awarded to one state agency. So if the state agency wants to partner with another agency, that is an agreement between the two of you how you want to handle that, whether you would um, you know, hire the other agency as a contractor, um, award them a subgrant, or otherwise disperse the funds to them. Great. Great, thank you. Um, another question we got is postage allowable for mailing surveys for assessment? Yes, uh, postage for surveys or assessments of program participants um, is an allowable cost, uh, would likely go within evaluation activities um, to assess the impact of the training and maybe what skills uh, participants are using at their site. Great. Um, and then, do you have specific information that needs to be included in the narrative? Um, within the memo, it, it lists what needs to be included within the grant application. Um, I would just remind folks 
on um, or in the audience that the, the focus of this grant and these funds is on delivering training um, and not developing training resources. So um, we would like to see the narrative of the project describing uh, your plan for delivering training throughout your state or whichever area um, you are going to be training CACFP operators. Great, great, and that's a great reminder. Um, another question is, will ICN offer face-to-face -face on the CACFP meal pattern, infant meal pattern, and best practices? And um, I believe they, so I know that they, we all know they did these face-to-face -face trainings last year. We conducted about 95 of them, and ICN reached about 4,000 people. Um, and that's a question um, our experts with the ICN aren't in this room right now, but that's something we can send out in the post-webinar email, just some confirmation on that and how to access these face-to-face -face trainings. Um, and then another question we have, just about the PowerPoint and the slides, will they be available after this webinar? Yes, a recording of this webinar uh, will be available uh, within the next two weeks. Um, so please check back at our uh, Team Nutrition website uh, for a link to this video that will be captioned um, within two weeks. Great, great. Um, and another question we have is, are printing and laminated costs for the child and infant meal pattern eligible costs under $10,000. I'm assuming with the lamination, they mean posters or a different kind of document. Um, yes, that, that would be an allowable cost. Um, as, as Mimi noted earlier, I just want to remind you uh, that bulk orders of the materials are allowed. And so if you wanted to, uh, as you said, blow up some of those materials into a larger size or get them laminated so they last longer um, and are a more sustainable material to use, that is an allowable cost. There's another question that we have um, that came in. Is there a team nutrition training grant RFA that will be released later this year, which will include CACFP or SNP, um, School Nutrition? nutrition. We do not anticipate releasing a FY 2018 Team Nutrition RSA. So, oh, um, so we're not sure if we can answer this question, but I do find it to be um, an interesting one. So, if CACFP is administered by two different state agencies within the state, so say one agency has a majority of CACFP and the other one has the at-risk portion, are both eligible to request um, this grant? And I'm not sure we have an answer for this. Um, we don't have a concrete answer on that one yet. Um, our policy in the past has been that the two agencies would need to work together mm -hmm. on one award. So maybe one agency would be the, the lead? Yeah, one agency would be the lead, and they would be the only recipient. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they, they wanted to work with the other agency, then they, that the other agency could serve as a partner. Okay. You know, and then it would fall back to, you know, any other partner that um, funds could be distributed as subgrants, or they could just work on the activities together um, using the funds, but it would be one agency. Okay. That's the main It would be in prime. charge. Yeah, the prime. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, and with that, um, we're at 3 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and end this. Thank you all for spending your afternoon with us. As Fran Steele mentioned, this webinar will be posted on our website shortly, so please keep visiting Team Nutrition, follow us on Twitter, and we will also send you all an email once this webinar recording is available. Thank you.